In today's class, we will learn how to rig a character using Adobe Animate. Yeah, that's a real stab. <laughs> right? Alrighty, guys, welcome to Animate with Everyone's Animator. I am Everyone's Animator. This is the second phase of our animation journey where we'll be talking about character rigging using Adobe Animate. In this class, we will take the rough sketch we created on our previous class, clean it out, color it, and separate all the body parts to make animation easy for us in the nearest future. If you've not seen the previous class, I would advise you to check the description below or click the link somewhere around here. I don't know. <laughs> check out that class before coming to um, watch this particular one. Bear in mind, there's a lot to talk about as regard character rigging for animations. So this video will be splitted into different... <laughs> the f*** man! So this video will be splitted into different parts. This is the first part. Enough of all the talk. Let's get to it. So what I have on my screen right now is what we've been able to create um, in our previous class and um, we'll be taking this further. So the first thing we need to do is to have our brush settings um, all set up. So I come to the tool panel, click on brush and then on the properties panel, I come down to where we have the classic brush option. So where we can change the size. So I think I will just stay, I will stay with the five size, you know, and then make sure you uncheck sync settings with eraser. So what this means is whatever the size of the brush is here, it will be syncing it with the eraser. So if I put a brush size to 20, that means eraser will also go to 20, but I don't want that to happen. So I will make sure it's unchecked and then my brush size is on five. To ink your character design, you can either use your brush tool or you use your line tool, which is what I have here, um, line tool, which is still the same thing as the pen tool. You can combine them together if you want to, but what you just need to make sure is that um, they both need to retain same size. So if I'm using my line tool now, pull a straight line, you see how tiny this is compared to if I have my brush and then I draw a straight line, you see it's more fatter than the line tool. So we need to make sure they both retain the same size just um, in case so we might probably want to use um, a line tool alongside with a brush tool. So I need to increase this line to size to correspond with what I'm using on my brush uh, size. So how can I do that? Select your line tool, same thing uh, the way we, do it, we did it for um, the brush tool. Go to the properties panel and then let's change this to about three. So once you've done that, Let's draw a stroke again and see the size. So we are we're almost getting there. So let's put it let's put it on um, probably we should put it on four. So let's put it on four. Alrighty. So four gives us um, kind of a close stroke size compared to what we have on our brush too with the size of five. So this is our brush with the size of five, and this is our um, line too with the size of four. I would have just put this on five anyway. But you know, sometimes um, the, the the line tool tends to go fatter than the brush tool. The reason is because my brush has uh, pressure sensitivity, so I can go lighter and then I can press other to have a thicker line. So I can control the size using my brush, but I can't control the size if I'm using my line tool. So that's why I prefer to have the line tool with the medium size correspond to what the brush is. All right, with those two settings all set up, we are ready to go. Um, in inking out our um, character design. So I will zoom in now, come down to my timeline, right click on frame two. Well, of course you can see all of our rough sketches are on frame one. So I'll right click on frame two, go to insert blank keyframe. Once you click that, you notice your artwork disappears. So not to fear, it doesn't disappear. It's just that we're on um, an empty frame, which is frame two. But if you pull your time indicator back, to frame one you will see your rough sketch so what we need now for us to be able to see our previous sketch in frame one is to turn on the onion skin you can find that um, right at the top level of your timeline i don't know the version of animate you'll be using because for older versions um all these options tends to be um below but what you just need to look for is onion skin so if you click on that you automatically see a ghost version of your previous frame and if I have a next frame as well, I'll be seeing that. But for this case, um, what we are just focusing on is our previous frame, which is the rough sketch. And then I'll be inking on the next frame, which is frame two. 
starting out your inking you can start anywhere you can start with the high brows the eyes the uh what is it called the head base or whatever but i would advise you to just follow along with how i'm gonna be doing this so to begin with i will start with the high brow zoom in and then i will draw the high brow however it is i want it to be depending on the character design style you want so i'll paint that house with my brush grab my paint bucket too and then i fill it in so once i've done this this is my high brows i'll select the two of them on the page which is this um, work area right here select the two of them right click on it and then go to convert to symbol shortcut f8 once you click on convert to symbol this little box will come up for you asking you what type of symbol do you want to convert it to we have um, the first option which is the name where we rename uh, our symbol to whatever it is we want and then the type the folder um, the registration and all sorts but for this course let's just focus on what it is we need for the name i'll call these um, browse and then for the type leave it on graphic if you if you drop it down you will see we have three options which is movie clip button and graphics but for this case which is character design for an animation we focus on graphic your registration on the other hand make sure it's set at um, the center in some cases you might have your registration um, at the top left but just click on the white dot at the center to have your registration there what that means on a nutshell is um, a pivot point kind of a thing so if you have your pivot point at the center it will make um, rigging easy for you during animation process correspond to if you have it at the top left so just put it at the center anyway everything else is good and once you have everything check out your browse your um your type and then your registration click ok now this eyebrow has become one entity ready for animation which is what we call a symbol in animate so i'll repeat that same process for the eyes and then um from the, for the lip also just to literate you need to know all the separate features in um, human body for the first case uh, which we are tackling right now is the um, the head so all the features part we need to separate in the head is um, the brows we need to separate the eyes we need to separate the mouth obviously and then the head base so the head base consists of the ear the um i don't think we can separate the nose anyway the reason why we need to separate the nose in this case is because the nose is overlapping the eyes if we have a case where the nose is just standing on its own we can combine it with the head base but because the nose um has a function of what it's doing here so we can separate it as well um the head base also comprises of the air so i will do that in a time lapse so we all can see how the whole process goes on um also not to bore us so i'll just do this in a time lapse so what i will be doing basically is i'll be drawing each facial separately and then converting them into a graphic symbol with each individual names just like we did for the highbrow Alrighty guys, so I've been able to create all the facials ready for the head and as you can see them separately I have the symbol for the high brows, I have the symbol for the highest base and then for the um, high balls I have the two dots ready and also for the lip I have the straight mouth for that and the nose is separate as well as the symbol and then the head base. So for the head base you can see what I have here, I have the ear connected with it and then the hair. So these are just one entity that moves together. Um, for the few um, questions that I believe you might be having, how do I achieve most of all these curves using the line tool? Best way to do that, or the only way to do that anyway, is um, grab your line tool, draw a straight line, and then grab your um, selection tool. Just come over to the center or the side of your line tool. You will see there will be a curve option that will come under your selection tool. So once you see that curve um, icon, just click on your line tool and drag so that way you can create a curve from that straight line so you can create a curve with it so let's say in a case where we have two joints like this and then you wanted to curve it to have a smooth curve go back to your selection tool curve this and then curve this one as well then 
click down on your selection tool and you will see sub selection tool what sub selection tool does is it gives you the vector um skeleton of the stroke or any brush or whatever it is you have on your page on your screen or your work area so you can easily manipulate them mathematically it's kind of like a illustrator or a choreo draw thing so if i click on that and then i click on this junction right here you can see that we have three dots uh, comprising of these two curve lines so that way i can come to this strip um curve control click on it and then drag it all over till it connects to the one at the top so that way i can keep adjusting till i get the right curve i'm looking for so that's basically how i was able to achieve most of my curves here for the highs i use uh, a simple over two for that and then in some cases here on like this year cross and the um the fracus i use the brush tool for that so now that we have everything separated as a, um different symbols we'll select all of them as well again all of them combined together right click and convert to graphic symbol remember shortcut is f8 so and then i will call this full ed so now we have everything as one group of edge so that way we can easily do our rotation and whatever it may be but before that once you're done converting to a symbol grab your free transform tool then you remember the um, registration we did at the center which is what we have here so now we can click your pivot point and then move it straight down to the neck area so that way we can easily have our nods and our look up and our look down so far so good for this we are done rigging the head for our character design so on a side note once you have a object symbolized you can still change whatever it is you draw um in that symbol or you can manipulate or even animate inside a symbol to do that you just have to double click on that symbol to go inside as you can see up here we have scene one full head now i can have access to my eyebrows my eyes and my mouth separately like we did outside and in the case where I feel maybe I want to change this nose, I can also double click on that nose to go inside the nose. Now you see we have scene one, full head, nose. So in this case, I can zoom into the nose and then change it to whatever it is I want to or maybe add further things to the nose. Now that we are done with the head rig, let's go straight to the body. I'll be using the um, next frame, which is frame three, to do this. Reason is because I need room to be able to see through and then have a blank page at the same time so same process draw and convert to symbol i'll be doing this in real time so i can explain as i move along separation also varies depending on the character design you have for the case of um this character i think what i will just separate here is i'll separate the right arm from the left arm and then the the chest i'll combine it with the neck and then I'll separate the leg as well. I can I can separate the foot if I want to. And I can also separate this other foot if I want to. But I think I should combine everything together as one entity. But remember, you can always separate as much as possible if you want to. Um, depends on the type of animation you want to achieve or what it, what it is you want your character to do. But it doesn't matter whatever it is we do now. You can always change it as we move along. So what I'm doing now, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to ignore every other part that I'm not drawing so I can focus on what it is that is available on the body part. So in as much as I'm, I'm even trying to draw this guy out, I'm trying to make sure it's perfect as much as possible. I think I'm good with that. I can always just fill in the color. So I'm thinking of a random navy shape. Mind you, my brush option is set to paint behind. So I can have my stroke at the back of whatever it is I have on my workspace. Then I'll go back to frame two eyedropper to pick the skin color come back to frame three 
and then paint the neck so now that i have the chest i'll select it f8 and then call this chest so let me cut this ctrl x and then right click paste in place in frame 2 so it's it's over the head i need it to go to the back and i can always right click and go to arrange send to back so now we have it at the back go back to frame 3 draw the next features Alrighty guys, so now I've been able to complete our character design separation for the body part. As you can see, the left arm is separated from the right arm and then the left leg. Also, to make things move more smoothly for us, make sure with your free transform tool, you put all the pivot points to where the joint is needed to be. So for this left arm now, I have the pivot point on the shoulder. And this right hand, the pivot point is on the shoulder as well. And then for the leg, even though we have the drawing all placed out together, you know this is not really a rigging thing to do but just to stay safe let's put the um, pivot point at the hip area as well same thing for the chest is also at the hip area and for the last phase is for us to select every part of this character now and then convert it to a symbol where we call it boy now we have the character as one entity which you know comprises of all the body parts we have um scene one boy so that way we can have access to our head our hands and our legs you know separately also you can double click to go into the head symbol as well where you can see we have scene one boy full head these are separate symbols that will make the rigging further easy for us and that is about it for this class on inking and coloring also um, converting your character body part into symbol so for next class we'll be taking this character design further by going inside each and every symbol to create all other assets we need to make the character complete for animation so with that being said i'll be making this project file available for us so we can easily have the ability to um, navigate through the timeline and also move around the um, symbols to see how the character come in place so guys that is all we have for today's class sure and make sure that you subscribe to our channel and that bell button click on it so you will get notified when the next class drops so until next time, guys, keep being a dazzling artist, so... <sighs>